Hello, I'm Natalie from Planacraft and I'm here to introduce you to our new range which is 80's Summer Zing. Now I know the colours on the video are coming out a good deal paler than what they actually are in real life. This entire series is full of really saturated colours, really really good and it's going to be one for your laser printer in particular because it has lots of full coverage print areas. Okay, so I've already printed out some of the items from the range. So we have, this is one of our 12 by 12 backing papers. Now because it's printed on an inkjet in this case, it had a white border, so I've just trimmed that off, so it's slightly smaller than 12 by 12. It also has a range of 6 by 4 cards. A range of 3 by 4 cards in both plain textured and designs. It also has borders and we've also done some printable embellishments that's part one like that as well as some actual layer die cuts now these have been done so that they make good strong embellishments to go on your page as you can hear because they're done out of card and um, sealed with wet glue it makes them very tough so those are the elements from our actual set that we've printed for this project. To that I've then added three sheets of American Crafts cardstock as well as one sheet of the fluorescent yellow from Paper Mania's Neon Collection. And I'll be completing today's layout on a 12 by 12 card and I've also cut out some numbers using the fonts that are on the brother canvas but you could use any sort of digitised font for this one. Okay, so I'm going to start off with considering what photos I want to put where. So one of the things I'm thinking is um, I want to put on a particular picture that is quite plain for the majority of it, it's actually on a white background so it doesn't matter if this page is completely covered in colour our central element is still going to stand out so let's get started okay I'm going to take you through preparing a die cut from our 80's summer zing range so I've put the beatbox onto the canvas for brother and I've arranged it so that I've literally got the four different colours all on the sheet at the same time and cut them out. Okay, the, the cards are as follows. These three are from American Crafts Move Collection. It's one of their um, amazing value ones. And then this one is from the Paper Mania Neon Collection. Basically because the lime green in this collection was not bright enough. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, you're going to want to start with your bottom layer, which in this case is the purple. Now because I couldn't find a teal colour that would actually match, I've cut my base layer in the purple. Which is a, a handy solution for if you can't find that colour. And I'm just going to bring in my reading tool, which will help you pick these up without damaging them. So, you're going to want to pop these to one side for the moment, because those are going to go on the very top. Okay, and I'm going to peel off our base layer. And then this is just a bit rubbish, so we're going to set it to one side. Then a couple of layers down, we'll have these. And I've already cut out my page title as well. Now, this is just using one of the standard fonts in the Brother Canvas. So, I 
haven't actually put that into our collection but if you would like it it's quite easy to re replicate and I'm going to go to our next layer which is the pink actually <laughs> okay there we go and again and you're going to want to build this up as we go along so I'm going to our lovely fluorescent yellow which is taking the place of our lime green and that's going to pop underneath our numbers to make them pop up off our page to want to put these ones here now that one's got to go on top but this here is excess to need so it can come off okay. and again we have dots that will go on to our, our layout so let's take this Set this to one side and again these are scrap. You could keep them for using to decorate your background. Okay, and finally our most fiddly layer. Now what I would advise is that you keep your um backing sheets to help you place these layers. And Take those off. Okay. The trick here is to be patient and not try to rush. Okay. Then set your cutting sheet to one side. For that still, put it back into protective colour. Okay, I'm going to start by creating a photo mount. So we're looking at a 6x4 photo. So because we're using 6x6 six six inch paper, what I'm going to do is actually trim it to 6x4. And then I'm going to actually offset that from our main image. So, if I show you what I mean. Because our letters have this shadow up to the top right, we we'll replace our photograph and place it like so. Okay. So then we're going to want to bring in our page and start to work out our layout. So I know that currently my photograph is landscape, however I know that my photograph could possibly be rotated around to that angle, which would give us more room for doing our journaling and we could also add on some of our printable items directly onto our photograph. So bear in mind that our photograph will be off to one edge. So you're going to want to put your photo mat slightly to the right and above where you actually want your photograph to go. I then have these numbers that are going to go across like so. I'll see a bit more level than that. But we're literally just figuring out how everything's going to work. Okay. Now I've printed off two of the three by fours. And the thinking behind this is that the journaling is going to overlap here. And our title will sit up here. Like so. 
then we can take our background paper and either run it so it goes directly in line with this so we just use that section or we could use it to fill that half but because I've got this white edge here I'm actually thinking that it would actually be better off just to use that section there so first of all I'm going to trim it down to 8 inches because these two cards are 3 by 4 and you're going to want to bear in mind your orientation of your pattern because I'll see you don't want to stick it down that way so you want to keep it up that way and the 8 inches is along this edge okay so on my trimmer there's my 8 inch mark so I'm just going to take my paper up to it Now I've actually printed this on the same card that is actually the backing paper as well. Okay, and then we are going to look at approximately 7 inches across. So let's just double check that, shall we? So you're going to want to take a ruler, and with your cards roughly in place, you're going to want to pop your ruler on. And you can see that it comes to six inches. So that gives us a nice six by eight piece there, and another one to use for another there. So line it up with the six inch mark. And there you go. Set the two pieces aside, ready for your next layer. I'm going to start off by matting this to our background. Now, when you see me do the embellishments in a minute, you'll see that I use wet glue. Because I'm using this on an inkjet print, I'm not going to use wet glue. Because that has the potential to make your print actually smudge or bleed. So I'm going to use dry adhesive on this. So just flick it over. I'm making you some double sided tape. Okay, use some strong red double sided tape for this project. Because I want it to last. My other double sided tape doesn't seem to last very long. So it's okay for card making, but it's not very good for scrapbooking. Okay, so I'm just going to wind that up along our edge and press it down firmly. And again, Always use non stick scissors for that. Okay. And you're going to want to take it up to a corner. And take it up to the other corner. Right, before you try and lift the backing tape off, make sure it's all pressed down firmly. Just makes getting the backing tape off that little bit easier. And I'm just going to use one of my reading tools just to get that backing tape off. It makes it a lot easier, as you can see. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to show you a little tip. I'm going to fold this little red tag outwards. I'm going to need press and give it a nice sharp press. Okay, so do that again. I'm just going to press outwards. Get my reading tool and give it a good strong and same down here you can do it from this corner take it down to the outside and press right remember that this tape will grab straight away make sure that you have your pattern the right way up and you're going to want to make sure that these tabs stay outwards like so and lining it up along the edge okay rub that down well and press on the corner just like so next you're going to want to peel off the red tape just move it down just move it down and across You'll be finding bits of red tape for weeks, but it's cool. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to a little bit of design with these because they're slightly different sizes that's down to my printer not down to the files themselves just going to have them like that so we've got the same step on each step any round okay so again we can stick those with some red tape And you don't need to use quite so much on the little ones. You can literally stick them top and bottom. This does help in terms of creating pockets as well. If you want to use a pocket card to do that, you can do. Okay. Again, that one's slightly off the edge, so we'll just give it a quick trim. Sure that again you got the pattern the right way up. Step it down. Okay. Good turn press down. And always double check everything at every stage. Actually, even the worst mistakes can be rectified if you do it quickly enough. So if we were to put that directly in the centre, although it makes our layout look good in one sense because it's covering up the join and it looks even, it's not that exciting visually. So you're going to want to put, remember we're going above and to the right. So you're going to want to put it above centre and then your photo is going to come to about here. 
red tape again. will be stuck over the top of it as well so it will be sealed in two ways to your actual backing so don't worry too much about being perfect with the tape here it's more important that you got that there right there because that's going to take the most weight so up and to the right And you can use your repeating pattern as a good guide as to whether you'll ever or not. Okay. And then you're going to want to space these out. Coming back from that outside edge in. So we've got our numbers. And it could even overlap that section there. As long as you leave this edge loose you can still slide your photo underneath it. So let's start with the 9 and work our way across. Now if we aim for we could do it across this line here which would help give space line. So you'll find this easier on a metal uh, or magnetic mat. I'm just going to line my ruler down the other way. Now the reason I do that is there is a lip on this ruler, as there is on most rulers, and you're going to want to not be able to slide your card underneath it. Okay. So, if you find your embellishment is curling slightly before you stick it down, just give it a little curl back in the opposite direction gently. And then you could use a Xyron for this bit, which would literally give you all over coverage of adhesive, or you can use the same red tape. So, I'm just going to use two pieces of the red tape. And you're going to want to cut underneath your actual embellishment. So you're going to hold the scissors at an angle and cut back underneath. The reason we do that is so that we're certain that the tape isn't showing without having to do too much fiddly cut work. If you cut it straight downwards, you'd have to make sure that you cut it exactly in line with the card. Okay. So holding the ruler in place, we can place on my okay. I'm just going to line this up on the inside of those holes in R8. And again, you can see the same. I've gone slightly over, so I'm just going to snip it. There's a little tiny bit just there. It is worth taking your time just to get that right because if you do have any adhesive shown on your layout, it will collect dust, especially in this project. So, this is actually eventually going to turn into a very nice.
album for the 80s. But you might use these for card making, traditional scrapbooking, pocket style scrapbooking. Just going to stick my number one now. Bear in mind what I said, we're going to want to put a tape along the left hand edge and I'm just going to put it like so. Okay, so let's trim that off again and going to snip into this one just so you can see what I mean if you go downward you've got to line it up with that card exactly and just get that bit of tape back off as soon as possible it will like to stick to everything and it is a permanent bond okay so Sticking our line next. Again, we're going to hold up our ruler and we're going along each number at a time. And now you want to get an equal amount of spacing from there to there. Okay. And if you do find any red tape, has fallen off, just move it as quickly as possible. Okay, and ready for our last number. So again, hold your aura, check your spacing, and when you're happy, place your one. So there you go. Now if you wanted to do a little tiny dot of wet glue just to hold down these lines, you could do. You could use a quickie glue pen to do that. You could use one, some of the two-in-one pens, such as the one from Kotaki. Okay. So, next I'm going to show you how to actually make our little beatbox embellishment. Next we're going to do the elements together, so first of all you're going to want to start with your shadow piece, or in this case without the shadow it's just the background piece that gives us a handle, and the next layer up. So to do this you can either use wet glue or you can use um, lovely red double sided tape and I would advise on having a pair of tweezers to hand just because you, this could get quite fiddly and I'm just going to use some Tombow mono liquid glue this will be available on our website shortly and I like this one because we have a choice of ends. We have a broad tip which has a lovely sort of serrated spatula on so we get a nice even layer application of glue and it has a fine tip for those finer things. So we're going to start by going straight to our pink piece and you really don't need to squeeze it at all. It's literally going to just come out the rate it needs to. Okay. Don't worry too much about getting the glue all the way to these edges from here for this layer. And using our tweezers, we're just going to guide that into place. And they do make very useful little 
Hopefully you're not seeing too much of my head appearing into shot. You do want to be able to see right over the top. And then once you're happy that those two places are lined up, you can then rub down well with good firm pressure. Now as this dries, because we've used a wet glue, it will become very rigid, which is good. All the die cuts that are part of the range in terms of the iconography of the range are actually layered and they're solid layered so that they will get nice and thick embellishments like this. So most of them are made up of um, three to five layers. Okay, next we're going to do our next layer. So this is now onto the lime green. And this is where you're going to want to start to stick these finer areas. So start off by doing a nice area of glue in the middle. Then we're going to flip over. And we're just going to lightly run our glue, literally using no pressure at all. And you're just going to literally just take it over those edges. The idea here isn't to barely put uh, hardly any glue on at all. Okay, then we're going to take our little tweezers. And again, we're going to line it up with these little big sections. They will make sense as the layers go on, so there we go. This glue does dry clear, so if you do end up with any glue seeping, it won't matter too much. What you may want to do is, once you've actually finished adhering these together, and while it's still damp, is place it under a nice heavy weight, which will then flatten your embellishment. And because we're not using 3D foam or silicon glue, it won't matter. Okay. Now these have got a longer bit because this is going to support the next layer. So you're going to want to bring those in next. And again, we're going to want to... Because they're, they're cut the same way both sides, you can choose which is, is the nicer side. A little bit of glue. Okay, and we're just gonna get this over. And again, we can use our pegs to line up. Don't worry too much about the glue coming over these points at this point. What it will do is give you a nice sealed edge and make those quite resistant. So again, a bit of glue, clean ends. And let's just draw in that glue down these tips. Okay. Um, line up to this peg again. Takes a little bit of a wiggle to get it in just the right place. And you can always check from the back that everything's lining up as it should. Sometimes it can be easy to spot if there's something not quite the right angle. Using wet glue, you also have wiggle room. Okay, now that we've done that, I want to let that set a little. So I'm going to do this little 
green bar across the top here. So this literally fits to this edge. And then because it's such a small piece you will find that it's easier to take the glue to the actual bigger section. And then we can flip it over and just use our tweezers just to gently tap it into line. And once you're happy, you can press it down. Oh, if it does shift, don't panic too much. As I said, you do have time to wiggle. Okay. Oh. If you do find your glue does that, give it a tap. It can be that it's got an air bubble trapped in it. So just give it a nice little cut and eventually it will go back down. Because you only want the tiniest amount of glue. Okay, now we're going to get another nine green dots. And you want to bring this up so it's level across here. Okay. Now, in the original file, the next layer that goes on top of this is the teal layer, but because we've done our background in the purple, it's purple on this one. Okay, so again, we're checking that this level across here, and then we're going to go on to our orange layer. So now it becomes a lot more easy to see where we're heading with the glue. And don't worry if you accidentally knock on the previous layers. You're just gonna bring it down from the top. And come here. Okay. And these all sit directly in line with each other. So, as long as that line is straight, it's in the right place. Just press it down. Give it a little if you need to. Okay. And do these little purple dots next. Okay, so here we go. Um, do it. Now. Um. Glue along here. Okay. You can take these one at a time. Get them 
this place. I'm just giving a little squeeze down. The chance of these going in the right place first time is like I'm just more than safe. Oh, you just gotta be patient. There isn't really an easy way of doing this. It's the most fiddly one in the whole range, which is what I wanted to show it to you. Because it's also one of my favourites. Okay. One of those where you really need to try not to shake. It's difficult when you're recording a video, so I'm just going to press that down and hold it for a few seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So. Remember to work it in that triangle because you, you really shouldn't be forcing your wrist to go in any direction it doesn't really want to go. Good tip for avoiding repetitive strain injury that. Last one. There. Okay. And again, once you're happy, just press them into place. And if they move when you do that, just give them a little nudge. Just so they're straight. And check the other end. Okay. As I said, I would then set that to one side and put weight on top of it, which is what I'm going to do right now. In my case, I'm just using a pencil case, which has a nice flat bottom to it and a good amount of weight. Now we're going to go on to the easy ones. <laughs> so for each one of the numbers, I've created a top layer and a shadow layer. So if I pick up the number one first. You have two ways of mounting this. You can go so that your shadow is to the left, or that your shadow is to the right. For this layer, I'm going to go to the right because for some reason I'm picturing it as a left hand page. So, again, because we can't see for certain where our, our glue needs to go, we're going to do it to the back of our number. You can use the fine end or you can use the bold end for this. And again, I'm going to use my tweezers. So, I'm going to line up along the straight line here. And again, I'm just going to squidge it along to where we need it to line up. So now what you want to do is you want to be consistent in your placement for each of the other numbers. Okay. Now just because we've got a little thin end here, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue on that edge. And then we can use our tweezers on the bit where we didn't put the glue. Okay. Yeah. Two ways you go and you're bound to end up up and down, aren't you? So. Again. Just the white and above. And just press it down.
you do do a lot with sticking in one go, you may find that you start to get, pick up your own gluey fingerprints. So it's a good idea to have baby wipes standing by just to keep your fingers clean. And remember, if you have spotted somewhere with glue, to keep clear of it until you can clean it up. So again, going to follow the same gluing locations. I'm going to put a little bit just here. Okay. And I just kind of want to squeeze that into the right place, line it up with your edges. And press it down. And you could also stick these underneath your same pencil case. And allow them to set for a bit. Okay, so now we've got our dried embellishment nice and rigid and now we just need to stick it to our layer now I'm going to go across the corner here and obviously I still want to allow room for our photo to sit in remembering it's going to actually end up lower so you've got to be careful about where your adhesive ends up so with that in mind we want our corner of our radio to sit below this line here now remember with this embellishment as you just saw me do it's very easy to bend this handle because there is only one layer to it so try and keep your fingers to the main body everything else from, apart from the handle is really solid so you want to allow for the photo to sit in so your red tape ends about there which means it can come over a bit and it ends about there which means it needs to come down So we can stick that there. There's going to be some journaling on here. And then we can always put on some additional embellishments to decorate our page. So for instance, we could put that there. We could put that there, but it clash. Or we could even put it up here, which gives us a nice diagonal dynamic across our page. Now, don't forget to keep an eye out for the book that will be coming out by Planner Craft shortly, which will go into the discussion about how to lay out, lay out your pages, as well as having lots of sketches for your layout. So not only gives you sketches, but it tells you why we have those sketches that look that way and why they work. Okay, so we're about to use an exact printable. So... Going on previous rules, we don't really want to use wet glue. However, there are some exceptions. You could use a silicon based glue, which would still give you wiggle room. <laughs> um, so that if you do need to move it, you've got that time to play with it. Or you could use a not so strong double sided adhesive. I'm still going to use that red tape just because I know this is, by virtue of it being 1989, it's going to be towards the back of our album, so it may very well form the spine of it. So I've just caught my nail, so I'm just going to take that off there and trim that in. So I'm just going to mount that along an edge there. And just going to take that right angle and go along the edge there and just quickly snip. Okay. Now, with these printables, what I did was I printed them out on my inkjet printer. And then I actually cut them out using the scan and cut. So I'm just going to take that down to the pink layer 
just so that it fits in nicely on that edge rather than trailing off because any element that leads off that page is going to take your eye away from that layout you want to keep it so that your eye stays within the layout circling okay again if you do need to pop any glue under there you can use a tiny bit on the corner of a spatula just to slide it under but to be honest on that printable you're not going to need it and we have this other printable here which kind of echoes the design in our speaker so we could put down there and you could put that on an angle so that we have this kick at the end which then brings you back up to your title and your journaling. You always want to keep the eye looping through your layer. But I think for now, mind you, oh god, there you go one. <laughs> Now if you printed this entirely using a laser printer, you could use wet glue throughout and it would not be an issue. And given the, the colours in this range, I would advise that you, you do that. But my laser printer won't go up to 12 by 12 and I wanted to show you how they actually print. If you only have a laser printer that goes up to A4, then you can literally just print it to fill your A4 page. Okay, and this is another of those rare occasions where I'm actually going to use wet glue. So, because I only need the tiniest, tiniest amount, I can just drop it straight on my layer. And then I can use tweezers or a bogey tool just to get this in the right place. So, you want to match this spacing here for your next dot and keep it all in line that way. Looks like it was always meant to be there. Okay, so once we have a photo in place, um, then we'll be good to go. Thank you for watching, and to see a completed version of this layout, you can check out our Instagram, which is Planercraft, or our blog, which is www.planercraft.uk. And there'll be details of our new shop opening, which will be very exciting. And this will be launched shortly. Hope to see you all again soon. And don't forget to check out our live broadcasts. Our schedule is available on our Facebook and on our blog. Bye!